Hi folks, Justin here. In this, our third video of the DevOps series, we're going to look at how to take our solution from version control in our repo, package it up, and release it into our target environment. If you haven't seen the second video in the series, it covers off taking it from the source and putting it under version control. So I'd suggest you stop and have a look at that and come back and continue with this video. Now, before we jump into it, I'd really appreciate your subscribe and like to the video. It just shows me that you're appreciating the content that I'm bringing you. All right, now, here we are in DevOps. We've got our build pipeline from last time, which is taking our solution from this source and putting it under source code control or version control. This time, we're going to do a release pipeline. So we'll do a new pipeline here. We're going to create it as an empty job because again, we don't have a template to cover off what we're doing. And the first thing similar to the build pipeline is I'm going to create a variable for the solution name. And we're going to populate that with the name of the solution. And I'll say that I want it settable at release time just in case I want to change it. All right. Now, if we go back to our pipeline, the first thing we need is to get our solution from version control. So what we need to do is add an artifact to the pipeline. So if we click on that, we've got various options. The one we want is to get from the Azure repo. So we need to choose which project it's coming from. Then we need to choose the name of the repo. And we've only got one in this case. Now we haven't talked about branches at all, but We've got a master branch, which is where everything's existing. That's where we want to get it from. And for the default version, this is where we have a couple of different options. By default, it's going to grab the latest from the default branch, but we can also get it from a specific commit from the default branch or specify at the time of release creation. So those actually allow you to go back in time and get a solution from any commit from the source and re-release it. So we don't need to keep a copy of the uh, solution file that we've released because we can go back and rebuild it out of source code control at any, any time. Now in this case, I'm just gonna leave it as the uh, latest from the default branch, but just keep in mind that you can use those other options if you want to. Now, I'm just going to give this alias for this artifact as Azure source. And you'll see where that comes into play uh, a little later. So we'll add that. So now we've got our artifact ready to go. Now we can go and do our actual pipeline. So it's going to be very similar to the way we did the build pipeline. So again, we have an a agent job. In here, we want our Power Apps. And, and remember that the first thing we want to do is put in our uh, tool installer. The next thing we want to do is we want to pack a solution. Well, obviously, we'll come back and talk about those in a minute. Then we want to import the solution into our target. And the final thing is, because we're going to do this as unmanaged, we need to publish the customizations. All right, so again, let's get rid of the red messages. So for our packing of our solution, what we need to do is tell it where to get the solution from. Now, fortunately, the, the release pipeline will automatically go and get from source code control all of the files that are part of the solution and put them onto the build agent's um, hard disk for you. So all we need to do is tell it where to get that from. Now, to save me dreaming up this rather elaborate place, so what it will do is it will put the, uh, the all of the files that are part of the solution into the default working directory under the name of the alias that we specified before. Then it will extract out. Now, if you remember in our repo, we had the solutions under a folder called D365 underscore solutions. So there it is. And in this case, it's going to have a folder for the solution name. 
So that's where to get the files from. Now, the next thing we want to do is build our output file. So in this case, we're going to build it in the default working directory and we're going to use the solution name.zip. In this case, I'm going to build it as unmanaged. Again, we're not going into that discussion. And that's got rid of the red error messages for that. Now, for the import of the solution, the first thing we need to do is tell it where we want to put the solution. In this case, we're going to go to the UAT. And the import, uh, sorry, the input file is going to be the same one we just built. So I can conveniently paste that again. And so that finishes off the import. And the last thing we need to do is to set up the publish. All we need in here is to specify the environment that we want to do the publish on. And that is all we need to do because that's covering off uh, the artifacts going to get from source code control, the files, we're packing it up, we're importing it and publishing it. So before we do attempt to run it, we'll just give it a better name, the new release pipeline. So we'll call this release solution, oops, solution from repo. So we'll save that into the root folder. All right, now the way you actually fire this off is we can do a create release if we're gonna be doing this manually, all right? So what I'll do is I'll just create that. So in this case, uh, it's gonna go through and, and ask for a few things. The artifact that it's asking for, you can see here that we've got various different uh, versions that we can actually grab out if we want to. We've got our solution name down here and all we need to do is create the release. And in this case, I'll just click on the release there. And if we click here, then we can actually watch the, uh, the actual release pipeline running through doing its various things. So I'll speed this up and be back. Okay, so it took about three and a half minutes to do that, which is about normal, but fortunately it was an automatic uh, job. So it's gone through, finished off all of its tasks, and if we jump over to our target environment, we can actually see, and you can take my word for it, it wasn't there before, so it's automatically refreshed this and released the solution into our target environment. So the only other thing that, that I want to mention is about how this gets triggered. So we obviously triggered this. Uh, if we go back to our, uh, our pipeline here, so from here, we can create the release, but if we go back and edit this, we can actually see that we can schedule uh, this to run. So if you want to do a regular release, um, then you can by all means set this to run every night or once a week or whatever it is. You might be going from your dev environment to your sit environment and you want to refresh that every night. So you can actually schedule this to run. And the same we didn't look at uh, scheduling in our build pipeline, but the similar things we have here. So we can set up a scheduled trigger for our build pipeline, and our build pipeline can actually trigger our release pipeline to run as well. So you've got various options as far as how you want to actually fire the thing. Uh, in the case of releases, you might want to do it manually. Um, depends on which target you're going to. Okay, so I hope that was of some use to you. In the next video, we're going to look at how to do a similar process, but with our reference data and our portal configuration. So that will wrap up the whole piece of how to automate our releases. All right, thanks very much for watching the video, and I'll look forward to catching you on the next one. Bye for now.